and welcome back. Starting to get the right aileron completed. What you see me doing here is I'm looking to see if there's any twists in the leading edge of the right aileron. The instructions have you check a few times in different locations. Um, here I believe it gives you about a sixteenth of an inch gap um, from end to end, so it's pretty pretty small tolerance. Um, but when you get the uh, when you start uh, uh, riveting the skins together, um, I end up using a right angle aluminum uh, piece to hold hold everything together. But here you see me putting in the uh, rear joint. Um, the again like the uh, rudder, you put the piece in and then mark it off and then cut it to length. And you want to drill um, perpendicular to the piece, not the skins, if that makes sense. <clears throat> and it talks to that a few times in different points in the instructions. For the most part, this piece is, is coming along pretty quickly. I'm just about finished here. Like I said, basically I've got a few things to do in this video and then... Uh, after that, it's just the, the final assembly of the skins. So now that I've got everything fit together, I'm going to go ahead and disassemble everything and do all the deburring and dimpling and all the, all the steps to get everything so it's all flush mounted for the rivets. For the most part, the aileron is, is not too terribly difficult. Um, it's a little bit time consuming. I think uh, between these last few videos of the aileron, I think the total film time is probably somewhere 10 to 12 hours worth of work, maybe a little bit more. Um, it's more of just um, kind of small, tedious work, but it's, uh, for the most part, it, it goes by fairly quickly. Now I'm, like I said before, I'm working on the right wing. I've got the right spar and most of the right wing ribs uh, put in place. I ended up having to uh, remove a, a rib from the spar. Uh, in fact, I'm, I was working on that today before I started editing this video. I had accidentally misaligned the uh, rib to the rear spar assembly when I went to drill a uh, mash drill with the holes and ended up drilling uh, a hole in the wrong location and just wouldn't work to uh, try to put it, you know, line it up correctly. It made the hole too large and couldn't rivet. So I went ahead and ordered a new rib and uh, just got that in the mail. It took about a week to get from Vans. Just got that in the mail today and uh, starting to assemble it. And uh, so once that gets done, then I'll be able to start finishing the uh, right rear spar assembly and so that'll get uh, most of the stuff the, the right wing seems to be coming a little bit faster than I anticipated um, the only thing that I really have left to do as far as components go is, is the flaps um, and then you know just kind of assembling everything um, the right fuel tank I'm mostly done I gotta do a water t uh, water test on it and then put the rear baffle on it and then do the pressure test um, so that won't take too long to complete and then I'll have uh, most of most of the right wing components completed so it's coming by pretty quick so here you see me uh, breaking the edges of the skins uh, this is to prevent pillowing when you go to rivet and I may I think I probably overdo it a little bit because it kind of pillows in the opposite direction if that makes sense um, so I need to make sure that you know going forward I don't break it quite as much I don't bend it quite as much but all of that is just to make sure you have a, a smooth transition from the forward skin to the aft skin and that uh, everything looks okay and you, like I said you don't have pillowing in between the rivets. So here I'm, I'm kind of sinking the trailing edge piece and uh, the way you do it, you know, the least, at least the way I do it, is the trailing edge is at an angle and so I basically take 
the scrap piece and turn it the other way so that the surface that I'm drilling or countersinking is uh, perpendicular to the drill bit or to the countersink bit. Um, some people have made uh, uh, basically uh, uh, wood blocks that have a slight angle to them that fits this piece. I just chose to take a piece of scrap and flip it and use that to keep it parallel or perpendicular to the countersink bit. So like I said before, just going through and dimpling everything, getting it ready to do the final assembly where I'm going to finally start riveting everything together. <clears throat> and there is a couple places on these forward ribs that are attached to the counterweight that I couldn't quite get with a squeezer. And so this tool here is useful. It's just a, a, a pair of pliers with uh, the dies welded onto the end so it, it will dimple. It doesn't do as good of a job as the pneumatic squeezer or the uh, C-frame, but it, it does it well enough that a rivet will sit flush, as flush as it needs to anyway. And other than that, recently I went to talk to an instructor here locally in the Phoenix area about getting my tail dragger endorsement. Uh, my grandfather-in-law has a, uh, an older uh, vagabond, a little slow and go uh, airplane that uh, he's got up in, in the Washington area and he is or has been talking about bringing it down here into the Phoenix area. So I thought it'd be fun to fly up there commercially and then uh, perhaps take a flight down from Washington with him in the in the Vagabond in a kind of a slow, uh, slow and low kind of flight. I've taken my Cherokee from the Phoenix area up to uh, Oregon, the Eugene area, a couple times now on my own. And that was a fun flight, but uh, I think a, a, a high wing, you know, slow and go type flight would be a whole lot of fun especially to do it do it with my grandfather-in-law so I decided to be safe about it and decided I'd go get my tail dragger endorsement to make sure I am able to land and uh, not uh, spin out or anything like that and uh, so we'll look into it and see how it how it ends up being but uh, I'm looking forward to it. it'll be a lot of fun so anyway, with that, as I'm putting this together, I'm going to go ahead and let this video end here. If you get a chance, hit that like button for me. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe and hit that bell and you'll get notifications anytime I put out a new video. We'll see you next time.